So I'm making a video of me painting a peacock. Um, this has inspired um, me to create an artwork in under two hours. So um, I've set the timer to see if I can actually handle the challenge. This is the picture that I'm working from. I'm hoping to do something similar to that. What I've done is I've grabbed all my paint colors here. Um, I tried to start with my dark blue, purple, the colors that I wanted to blend to. I did a oops with the green isn't in the right spot, but I haven't used any of that yet. So as I worked, I took a plate and I started working with the dark blues and then I mixed it to purple and then I went into reds and then I went to, um, you can see I blended some orange in there and then I worked around that way. So back to the canvas, you can see where I started from the picture. I started over on this side. I started doing blues as I went around here. This is just kind of the underpainting. Then I blended into purples. Uh, went to a darker purple itself, added some red to that purple, did an overlap there, and then I finished down here with some oranges and then I added some yellow into the orange. So that's where I've completed it to right now. So now as I'm working, I just want to pull out some of that color. Um, the circles you see here that haven't been colored in, those are going to be the actual details of the peacock feathers. So right now I'm just taking some water, I'm dipping it in, and what I'm doing is just pulling away from the center of the peacock's head here. Um, I worried, um, actually I didn't worry at all about the details that I added here. So you can see right now, I'm just trying to pull from the center and pull out to give it that radial effect. So remember, this is the underpainting. It doesn't have to be beautiful at this point. We're just trying to get that detail of it coming away. So hopefully when we're finished, it'll have that radial effect. So I'm gonna go back in here and I'm just gonna try and smooth out that line that I've got happening there. So water's your friend right now um, if you're trying to blend out. Okay, so I've completed some of the details on here. What I found is that I worked with taking the solid colors on top of after I'd done the water and using this flat brush that looks like this, um, I just went in and I turned the brush sideways and you get some interesting effects, again, trying to head to the head. So next I'm gonna move on, I think, to the body and I'm gonna do a blue and you'll see some darker blue. I may have to add some black to the blue to get it to blend it into the rest of the body here. So I just completed painting the body, like the first coat here. One of my favorite brushes that I really like to use is this flat brush um, right here. If I could give you a number, I believe it's a number six. Anyway, it's one of my favorites to cover a lot of area and it's just a nice simple uh, synthetic brush that I can cover the area, not terribly expensive. Then um, when it came time to get up to the head here and add some colors to it, so you can see the whites. Um, that have been added in here. Um, I've switched to this brush now and now I'm going back in and just adding some black and I tried to do black and blue but what I found is that the blue isn't dried yet so I just go in over top of it with some black so looking at my re reference picture I'm just gonna go in and add and then if you go oh my gosh that's too dark then just go back in with some water take the excess black off and then we're just going to blend and I'll come back when that's done. Okay, so I've gone into the eye area here and worked on that. Now, if you're wondering why that's jagged, that was intentional. It's trying to make it look like, you know, there's the feathers there. Now I'm going to take the head and I'm going to use the base of the paintbrush and dip it in white paint. And I'm going to come back and apply that onto here. So I'm hoping that that will actually give the appearance so what I've done is I've just taken the white dip the base of the paintbrush in there tap it and can you see even right there that's what I want to have if I'm looking at the head of this that's what I want to have up here so looking at the reference photo I want to go in and tap Thought I'd just make a little video here of the part of the head that I have finished. Um, I'll probably back, come back in and add some details as I'm working, but now I'm going to head over to this area. Um, one thing I did want to point out, as I'm painting, I do like to paint the side of the canvas. If you're planning on hanging this in your house later, it's always important. Um, it's going to bug you if you have to look at a canvas that you haven't finished the sides. So options are you can wait till the end to paint it or you can paint it as you're working because you already have those colors mixed. Um, I guess what you can do too is you could take one color like a black and just paint the edge black. That could be kind of interesting as well.
Okay, so as I've created here, what I've done is I've taken this brush and I've used the colors a light green. These are Chromacryl student acrylics and I've mixed it with the dark blue and then I've added some white in there and you'll see on the picture like right here, um, I just took one of the finer brushes that I had, um, like I think it was this one and it's just a little round brush and I just added some of those lines on there. Then I went in with something that's a little bit coarser and again it's just a student brush, um, spectrum size number six round brush. It's very coarse and I just used that to add some of the blue into the top there. So I'm back. I've made this part of the painting over here. So as you saw before, I had completed the underpainting part with the um, small round brush. Then I took a flat um, brush about the same size as the round brush. So it was actually really like this. And I went in and I made all these little marks here. It was relatively easy. They're just loops. And then I've just used the paintbrush to go in and like you can push and end up with like kind of a detail like that. What you're going for is to have a bunch of variety without it being exactly the same, but still having interest in your circles. So trying to not make it look like perfect scales, but we want to have some repetition there. So, and then all I've done is to try and draw some, this make the peacock body stand out, is I just went around it with the blue and have kind of outlined that so I get a sharper line out of it. So I'm kind of happy with how this is coming together. I've got um, these dots that I just did here. They're quite easy. I did them with purple and blue and I used my favorite flat large brush that I have or largish brush but for this painting it is large. So I used this and it was quite easy to just go around and make the swooping motion and make circles with it. So this is the start of what is going to become the feathers and I believe I'm at about 40 minutes left to get this two hour painting completed. Okay, so of these circles um, for the feathers, I've gone in and I used um, just the round brush that's a moderate size, so about like this. And I went in and I swooped and then I added some little Vs of random spots. I don't want them to look exactly like, but I wanna give it that randomness. So as I step back, I'm kind of pleased with how that's starting to look. So I'm just gonna keep layering on colors until I build up something that resembles a peacock feather. So I'm pleasantly surprised with how the um, interiors of the feathers have turned out. Um, basically I just used a small brush and I used the color purple and I did went around did the back of that. Then I went in with a fine brush like this one, did some yellow there and it started to look like I did just make circles but this is actually layering of paint that was happening here and then the last thing I did is I just went and made random little spots on here. So now my next part is to make the actual feather part. So I'm going to look at the original work I was working from and start doing some of those fine lines and then it's just about finished with some finishing touches. It will be done. Okay, I'm adding the details on. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing the light green and the dark green together because I found that seems to look the best on the canvas right now. And then I have those angles coming here. So I'm just going to show you. So I'm going to bring this in to following that angle, bringing that down, and then I'm just going to let the brush do the swooshing motion. And I'm just using the flat brush. It's hard to hold this and paint. And then I would do the same at the top. So just coming from the top and coming around. Just like that. So the timer on my two hours has come and gone. This is where I've gotten to. Um, unsuccessful at meeting my two hour time limit, but I'm gonna keep working here. Um, I feel like another 45 minutes, I definitely have it to where I want it, but maybe it'll be a little bit even faster than that. I have the feather details. Um, I'll probably continue adding on to them. I'm going to go in with black now and just bring out some of the details in them. And then I'm going to add black to the um, background. So around here where you see that, there's going to be some black slices in there and um, scratches. And then we need to add his little plume right on top of his head. So I don't want to forget that. So I think I'm under three hours, but I finally finished it. I'm quite happy with the results. It's very vibrant. It's probably one of the most colorful things I have painted yet. 
and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So here is the final version of Peacock. <laughs>